What's up, Cindy's Chronicle? Boom! <laughs> Guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in to Story Time, Story Time, Story Time, Story Time! If I could sing, I would stretch that out and make it wonderful. But, okay guys, so, not only am I doing my story time today, and I'm doing it late, but better late than never. I'm keeping my promise with my story times on Thursdays, okay? Check this out. Trying to add that thumbnail in there. <laughs> so I have shrimp, lots of it. Y'all know I keep my neck bones over here, okay? Look, juicy, juicy. I got my potatoes, my corn. Y'all know I like my sausage. Mm. <laughs> now what you laughing at? What are you doing? <laughs> Eating sausage. <laughs> I got my butter. I got my lemon and my cucumbers. Y'all know I need something to cool my mouth down like right now. Right now, my mouth is burning the pot. Mmm. Okay. It cooled it all the way down. All right, guys, so, mm, I tried to do a real mukbang today. I got the camera all up in my business. All in my mouth. All close and stuff. <laughs> all right, guys, so story, we're going to get straight into story time. Story time tonight is going to be about, um, it's really, really sensitive. I might even tear up a little bit. Um, it's about it, um, it's one time when, before my daughter had her baby. Um, well, anyway, it's, let's get straight into it. All right. So, before we start talking, I'm going to say my blessings because my little chair is rolling. I'm going to say my blessings so God could bless this food and protect it and help me not to gain a whole bunch of weight while I eat it. My Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing this food. I thank you for um, allowing it to nourish my body. Amen. Amen. Ah. Okay. So, guys, a while back, I want to say, this, the bath on this should not be that hard. Mmm. Shrimp is so good. Mmm. Okay. A while back, let's see, seven... It was like seven exactly months. seven months. <laughs> she had him on the fifth, so it was like a few days before the fifth. It was the day September. before the fifth. It was September fourth, two thousand eighteen. Two thousand eighteen, guys. September fourth, two thousand eighteen. Um. Well, let me let me tell y'all about a little bit leading up to that. My daughter. For for you guys who don't know who my daughter is. Her name is Neek. She has her own YouTube channel. His life is Neek. is in the description below. She is a famous YouTuber. Um, she's been very successful at YouTube. She motivated me to do YouTube. Now, me and my daughter, mm, me and my daughter have a really, really close relationship. Always have. We've always been joined to the hip. So when she moved out of town, it was really hard for me. Don't get me wrong. I was so happy for, to see her grow. But. And I knew I had to. Accept the fact that she was growing. For herself. And that. I couldn't hold her back being selfish. You know wanting her here with me. So. She took the leap and she moved to Texas. Okay guys. We have this connection. Mothers, y'all know what I'm talking about. But we just feel stuff, right? So, my daughter, the plan was 
when she made eight months pregnant, when she was eight months pregnant, once she made eight months, she used to come home. She used to stay with me the last month so I could keep an eye on her. So, you know, if she went in the hospital early, blase, blase. Okay, guys. So she decided at eight months pregnant that, <clears throat> that she wanted to move into her condo. Because after she had the baby, she wanted to be able to go back to Texas and not have to worry about moving or doing this or doing that. I disagreed. I felt like, mm, a little piece of corn. I felt like you're pregnant, you know, all that can wait. So, you know, as parents, we want to give, we want to show our kids tough love, right? So, she was like, no, mama. I want to move into the condo. So I said, well, I'm going to fix her. I ain't going help. So, you know, I kept getting these signs. Every night I wake up in the middle of the night. Mothers, I know y'all know this feeling. Especially if you're really close with your daughter. So, hey, my love. <laughs> um, So... We talking about you too. <laughs> so guys, so um my I'm trying to think of exactly how it happened. Mm. Mm. My daughter called me and she said, Mama, I know you're gonna be upset. I went on ahead and got the condo. But I can't do it alone. I need your help. I need you to come help me get my stuff. And get packed up. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh no. Uh, uh. Nope. No ham, no ma'am, no turkey. She ain't doing that. She is not going to Texas. You know, I, I was going to show her tough love. Parents, y'all understand. Everything in me wanted to help her, but I couldn't. I had to show her tough love. Y'all don't know that feeling. So... I didn't go. All right, for about a week straight, I laid in the bed. And that mother intuition kept saying, go, go, go. I was like, no, no. I didn't think it was my intuition at this point. I just thought it was me. Because I'm all, we're always joined to the hip. I'm always there. If she say, mama, I'm coming. Not because... She need me because I want her to need me. You know, I think we talked about that one time in one of our story times uh, about my kids growing up and getting older. Um, the hardest thing is, you know, you feel like your children don't need you anymore and you want them to need you because you want to always be a part of their life. But I, I told myself I wasn't going to do it. I woke up one morning. Um, I don't want to freak y'all out with this number thing. I'm into numbers and stuff like that. So I dreamed some numbers that basically... The numbers was 222. When I see the number 222, it always tells me to follow my intuition. Okay? So, I dreamed 222. When I got up and I'm like, follow my intuition. I'm like, no. I, I, I was telling myself that I was psyching myself up to believe that, you know, my intuition was telling me to go get her. And the next day, I went to work. I got off of work and I just couldn't take it no more. I said, I'm going. I called my god sister Renetta and I said, I need you to come drive to Texas with me. I had just talked to Neek earlier and I said, so what are you going to do? She missed her eight months checkup because she was trying to get her condo together. And um, prior to this now, she was on the phone with Janae. Well, I was so upset with her. She was talking to Janae and she told Janae that while she was moving, her vision was blurry. I didn't think nothing of it. You know, I'm thinking... She probably ain't have on her glasses or something. I ain't think nothing of it. Okay. So, my god sister said, okay, let's do it. We got on the road. After I got off the work, I want to say we got on the road. Hmm, probably about 8 or 9 o'clock that night. We got there. Oh, we got on the road later. It might have been about 10 o'clock because we didn't get there till like 4 o'clock that morning. Um, Took a nap. We might have slept for about 
two hours. I got up the next morning. I said, get up, baby. Her appointment was the next day for her doctor's appointment. I was like, we going today. Let's go. And she thought I was crazy. Everybody thought I was crazy, right? It's a mother's intuition. So we got, we got up in the morning, maybe about 7 o'clock. Um, my guard sister followed me in my car. And we headed back to Baton Rouge. Okay. On the way back to Baton Rouge, it didn't even dawn on me that my daughter slept the whole four hours, literally. Um, she slept as I rubbed her hair and just, just knew everything was okay because I got my baby now. You know, whatever that intuition was, it's okay because I got my baby now. So this was September the 4th. We drove, we made it into Baton Rouge. It might have been about... Hmm. We had to leave later than yeah, because we I took me to get her something to eat, so we had to leave later than seven because we didn't make it into Baton Rouge till probably about three o'clock that afternoon. I took her straight to the women's hospital. I checked her in, um, told the lady that you know she had missed her previous appointment, and um, then they you know they told us to go, they was gonna see us or whatever. So she went in to have to go sit up. She went in. The little room where they come in, check your weight, you know, just give you a little checkup. The very first thing the nurse said when she walked in is, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get the doctor. I'm like, for what? What's, what's going on? You know, I had my intuitions, but it wasn't. I knew that um, she was doing a lot, but my intuition never told me, your baby's sick, go get it. I didn't know what it was. So she went and got a doctor and they came back in like two minutes later. I'm like, whoa, this is the quickest visit I ever had. And um, when the doctor came in, the doctor said, I need to run some tests on you. And we're like, why? She said, because you gained 16 pounds since the last time I saw you. And they had saw her prior. They were supposed to see her two weeks. But it had been three weeks because she missed her. She had missed her appointment. So we were like, okay. She gained 16 pounds. Like, what's the big deal? You know, she's pregnant. She was, the doctor was like, oh no, nobody gained that much weight in three weeks. We're like, okay, well, she do eat a lot. Anyway, the doctor came in. She said, I, what I want to do is I want to take your blood and make sure that you don't have uh, preeclampsia. I had never heard of that before. It was new to me. So we're like, Okay, hey, it was 12.22 just now when I said that. <laughs> oh, anyway, so remember my favorite numbers are 222. Okay. So, um, we was like, okay, fine. So she went to go run the test. She did a blood test. They came back in probably like an hour. And she was like, uh, no, I take that back. The test had not came back in yet. But, I, but they had said that her blood pressure, they did a blood pressure thing and said her blood pressure was a little high. They wanted to keep her for a, like two hours while they wait on her test to come back to see if she had preeclampsia, see if she had any, she, she had to pee in a cup to see if she had any blood, whatever it is that they could tell that you have preeclampsia. So we were in there, they gave her some fluids, told her to close her eyes, get some rest. They just wanted her pressure to go down because she was a little swollen, a little too swollen. They wanted to make sure her pressure was going down so that um they can normally i'll be eating while i'm talking this is an emotional story for me guys they wanted to make sure that she didn't have preeclampsia so anyway they she was in the room they gave her her fluids everything was seemed like you know i was like whoa looking at my baby like she was swollen she's starting to go down already well about two hours into it her test results came in and let me mind y'all before i went and got my baby she told me, Mama, it's okay. I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to drive to Baton Rouge by herself. Her boyfriend was coming too, but they were coming in two separate cars because they were going to be here for like three months. Because she's going to stay here until she had the baby. Then they're going to be here after they had the baby. So they were going to drive two cars. And I, I think I was like, oh, no, that's not happening. You're not driving here by yourself. Okay, I'm going to fast forward back to we're in the hospital now. Tess came back. The lady came in there and she said, we're three out, about two and a half to three hours into her doctor's visit. The nurse walked in there and she said, um, I'm a, I, I need, she started taking her off of the, the, the fluid, you know, 
And I'm thinking, okay, so her test came back. She's taking her IV out or, you know, moving her IV machine. Okay, everything must be good. We're going home. She said, we're taking her to labor and delivery. She has preeclampsia. That's when your pressure gets so high that it turns into preeclampsia. Um, we're taking her to labor and delivery. We need to induce her labor. She's going to have this baby tonight. Okay, I'm, I'm tearing up. Wait, guys. <laughs> um, I'm only, it's emotional for me because, let me tell you, mothers follow your intuition. Okay? It does not lie. Okay, again, they take her in the room, they give her some stuff, they start getting her prepped for this baby, right? And so I lay on the couch because, mind you, I've been up, like, literally for 48 hours. Hardly no sleep. Okay, I'm, I'm tearing up. I got to take a bite. I got to take a bite. Hold on, guys. Hmm. Uh, so, I take a nap. And while I'm taking my nap in the, in the emergency room, I mean in the, the doctor's office, I dream of 222 again, 2229, 222. So I jump up and normally it's always my new, my intuition that tells me, you know, so I decided to Google it again because I want to know why my, these numbers are on me so hard. So, and, it, and you know, no disrespect to the people who are not into numbers. It's a, it's a, this thing I got going on. Anyway, so, um, so I Google 222 to see if I'll get the same intuition. And what stands out to me is new beginnings. So I'm like, okay, new beginnings. New beginnings, follow your intuition, all this stuff. My grandbaby's about to be born. All right. So, Gaia, they take her out the small room, right? To put her in her regular room because... She all prepped up. She ready to have his baby. <laughs> what was her room number? Janae, what was her room number? Two, 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 nine. <laughs> the number's on me hard. We get in the room. Um, she didn't she didn't have the baby this that day. That was September the 4th because they were prepping her. Um, they had to induce her labor. She ended up having it September the 5th, the very next day. But um, it was the most beautiful day ever in life. Y'all, you guys know how much I love my grandson. He's like everything to me. He's the world. You know, God really blessed my family when he gave us my grandson. So that story is really emotional because children, if your parents are constantly telling you something listen to them i'm not sure if you guys know what preeclampsia is but my daughter's vision was blurry because part of preeclampsia she could have went blind she could have caught a stroke while she was driving um preeclampsia is pretty bad for people who don't know it that's why they had to emergency immediately admit her they didn't waste no time at all they immediately admitted her and induced her labor so like i said kids this is a this is a um story time for me but it's also a lesson for for other people you know um i don't know who needs to hear this but if your parents if you and your parent has a have a connection um listen to your parents or tr or even if your parents sound too crazy okay and, and, you know, I would never go at my daughter and say, I've been seeing numbers. I would never go. I would never do that to her. But it was an intuition. It was a, I have a spirit of this ermine. And it, it was my intuition that told me, go take care of your baby. I know you want to teach her a lesson, but right now is not the time. You know, so if you don't want to just do exactly what your parents say, at least take the time to um, think about what they're saying, to, to at least try. If it don't cost you a thing. Say, you know what? Let me just do it because this lady just might be right. You know, yeah. if she tell you jump off the bridge, then maybe, okay. I don't know. Maybe she telling you to jump off the bridge because she know that they got a net down there ready to catch you. I don't know. But don't jump off a bridge if you, <laughs> I don't know. But all I'm saying is this was an emotional time for me. It was, um, it was beautiful, but, um, it definitely, um, 
allow it definitely motivated me to get more connected with my spiritual side and start paying attention more to signs start paying attention more to my intuition and um yeah so guys i didn't do a whole lot of eating and i'm hungry but that story was so you know mm. tell me guys what y'all think about that story also, we'll let you guys come to. We're over here talking about you. Let me wipe my hands. Come on, Tutu. Hold on one second. Say hi. You're looking at Janae. Kaiser, say hi to everyone. Oh, oh, he wants to. <laughs> He wants some seafood here. Here you go, stink a butt. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, say hello to my stink a butt. <laughs> say, I am a miracle baby. <laughs> and my lovey prayed for me. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Two, can they get a smile? Oh, you're going you're gonna to give Cindy's angels a smile first. Give them a smile. Give him a smile, my love. Let's see that smile. Let's see that smile. You gotta take the food from him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's take the cucumber. Can we get a smile? Let's yeah, smile. Kaiser, let really it smile. He's the happiest really baby smile. I know. Kaiser. He like, give me that cucumber. Let really it smile. Let really it smile, man. Give a smile, sugar. You want that food. You know how to smile for everybody. <laughs> yeah, Ziggy. Yeah, there go my smiley. Mm -hmm. I gotta have smile. Here yeah. you go. Take your cucumber and let me finish my video. Here you go. Here you go, my love. Here, name. That's my sick baby. <laughs> yes, honey. So, guys, I would very much love. <sighs> I got my aloe vera juice right here, baby. This stuff be so good, especially when you got a spicy mouth. Mmm. Sorry, guys. This video took so long, but let me tell you. It would have took longer. If I'd have been eating. Mmm. Mmm. I don't know. I see people comment a lot about my neck bones. I love my neck bones, guys. I peeled some of my shrimp. I ain't peeled a lot of them. I should have. These babies, so good. So good. Hey, my love. Is that cucumber so good for you? Yes, it is. So, guys, tell me what y'all think about my story time. Mothers, I would love some feedback on how y'all feel about my story time. Because y'all know, and, and children, let me tell y'all something. First time mothers, yes. Um... I always tell my daughter, you gonna get to see now why I act so crazy. Now it's your turn to experience what I did. But even children, y'all have more power over yourself than you realize. Um, take the time to follow your intuition, to listen to yourself, listen to your body. Um, and Become a more aware with yourself. Become more aware with your your mind. Come become more aware with your surroundings. I would advise anybody to do that. Anybody. Okay, guys. Since 
y'all already told the story. I'm not gonna make y'all stay here with me about to eat about, while I eat, but I'm about to tell this up. Okay? It's so good. If you're new to my channel, do me a favor and subscribe. Hit that bell so you can get notifications. Um, tune in with me every Monday and every Thursday, cooking on Mondays. Oh. Story time on Thursdays, a little this and a little that in between. I even got a little couple of pranks up my sleeve. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank y'all so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment. And let me know how I'm doing on my story time and how you like this message to this story today. Mwah!